games they played last split. <laughs> they played a lot of games. It's crazy. <laughs> 22 games in the last regular season. If you include the playoffs one now, they're up to 18 games. Absolutely crazy stuff. So they definitely a lot of homework for Loud to read, but are ready for the games for sure. And Send City's here behind them. The Loud fans already get into that volume 11 as well as we start off here on Sunset for the grand finals. A lot of tiles work from Sen just to make sure that mid area is controlled from Loud. It feels like Loud's being real passive here. They're ready to go for a first round retake with whatever Sentinels hits. Not only on that mid take, there was a lot of pressure on both sides from the initiator getting information on yeah. the extremities. And now, as you mentioned, playing the retake style for Loud. There's still a first contact from Tui's throwing up paranoia, keeping Claris at bay from Sentinels. Finally a first contact, but the heavy damage goes on to John Cutie. Sentinels yet still want to move forward in this pistol, and Loud decide to pull back. More of a smoke happening on left side lane, clearing out towards the left side. That should probably get QCK right now. As the one-way smoke comes up, Sentinels tries to execute in and actually does hit QCK towards the back of the site. There's the first blood dropped by the Sentinels. A second as well by a second. And Loud is falling down on this pistol with the spike down on the east side for Sentinels. Fantastic job at not allowing Loud to get into a positioning as we kind of saw on Ascent. They can't get these utility, these flashes in order, that Sova Dart in place and Sentinels bite back before the retake even really happens there. Less now, a few final kills on the exit to hopefully collect some money for the squad in a, a different buy next round. But we'll see a lot of teams have been full classic saving out on that second round, favoring a bit of utility. And we'll see if Loud decides to do that. Sentinels pick up the first round. When they start off with a little bit of across the map, they were looking mid first, then they were moving over to the side of A, but they took it slow. Again, something different we're seeing with John Cutie and Sentinels, that they'll work the map a bit before actually making that commitment. And with Loud, it seems they were heavily pressured in that retake style they wanted to get. Sentinels wanted to continue to fight forward after that spike plan. Now yeah. putting themselves for Loud on defense on a stack towards the B side, oh, setting yeah. up for Potentially a trap play, but maybe getting information first. You already see out in the open, Sadak is just waiting for a contact for a push. Mm -hmm. Anybody towards the B main sign. You even see Kawanzine trying to play a little tricky hide spot in the market major. He's just waiting for that wall to go up and catch somebody off guard. Again, the slow play from Sentinels. They're, they're pretty much repeating first round strat, right? We see that Zekin and John Cutie are working tiles. This time, they proceed into mid but that door is going to be shut on him right quick. Looks Just, like they could go all the way through here. This is going to be trouble for Loud to regain any positioning. Loud's been good at it so far, continuing the good reads, always being active around the map on their defensive side. Back towards the spawn, they hear Sentinel stopping towards the A side again. There is some sort of hope here if Tui's there. He go, gets that contact onto Tens, slowing the pace of the attack. Instantly traded out by John Cutie, though, as the plant goes down for, beat for A main. Triple push forward, but the crossfire is just too good for Sentinels. They do a little bit of damage here for Loud, and you know what? I'm not going to discount this player. QCK finally yeah. pushed forward by second, and Sentinels get the second round. All right, two patient rounds from Sentinels. They pretty much walked themselves into a situation where they're fighting Loud. The first one ended up at A on pistol. That second one, they were able to find their fight as they push behind enemy lines in mid, which also works out for Sen because now they have a, a bit of map info of how Loud will play those lower buy rounds, whether or not they were covering mid a lot. Maybe they can read a bit into it once they see it again. All of that information helps. So now, what can Loud do? They tried the B stack. That default take on A for first round did not work, but they're gonna heavy stack towards A here as we get a bigger default from Sentinels. And I'm interested to see if Loud does a bit of the extremity pushing here. They need each other to get back for this initiator utility on the retake. So losing somebody on a peak would be detrimental to Loud. They're gonna stay back and play a very passive ooh, game. Except for that player. Except for that. Tuiz gets dropped instantly, Sentinels. Once again, in a power play, John Cutie still lurking around towards this B side, trying to see if he can hear rotate out of market. But for Sentinels, it's still an information game. For Loud, it's the aggression. We talked about the extremities, but this time it's towards the B lane. There's the contact on a few, finally gets traded out. But we're even up on a 3-3 with Zekin heavily damaged. And that lurk though for John Cutie, it's now open. It's up to Sentinels to try to figure a way back towards the B side to meet up against the IGL. 
Going the long way around. Wouldn't be able to clear mid and do not know what breadcrumbs are left there from the Cowan Zine push. Hurt. Yeah, they're right. QCK is able to catch this audio and will take a shot. An easy one. Foster placement. Zekton low on HP. Actually dodges left. away from the flash and made it through. Getting a plant right now for Sentinels would be pretty decent for this bonus round that they have. John Cutie watching Zekton's back as the plant comes down. Snake Bite just dropping down inches away at Zekton's feet. And allows both players now to group together towards the back of the site. They see the recon darts are rotate a flank from Sadak towards the B main. QCK, no more flashes, has to move together. They have to play the fundamentals now for Loud. It's a blaze wall first, but another snake bite, forcing John Cutie out of position. A one for one, solo second, a headshot on the first, but gets denied right away by Les. A nice trade for Loud. They convert their gun round, but Sentinels, they are definitely happy with that result. Yet Loud securing that one. Les with the Viper's bite on to Zekin, actually paying off in dividends as they follow up on it. But you're right, so much damage done from Sentinels. Loud are going to have a bit of trouble rebuying into this. Already see some stingers on the board as we rewatch this play again. Good teamwork, good trade. Fundamentals on that one. Keep pressing W until you can get your teammate anchored on that play. So a good post plant from Loud. We see that successful. Can they keep it up? Phoenix Ultimate's up. They may try to go for an A push here as they already have that side quite stacked. And the only one that's going to be seen is Tui's. Loud having to play once again a gamble stack, this time towards B because of that bonus round that Sentinel's had. Yep. The economy is very low. The strongest weapon was the one that was maintained by Les on that previous round, which is a Vandal. And the rest are just looking for that trap play. It's up to Loud once again to do a lot more rotations around the side, have better reads. But thankfully, they have a scan agent and Sadat, who's currently joining towards the B main. Spots nothing. This is good for Sentinels to work the map. What a choice. John QD again calling it shots to the left side of the map here. Obviously a retake for Loud, but this should be Sentinels planting, pushing forward, and actually gaining some position so Loud cannot do anything really here on the retake. The way Sentinels have been approaching each of their games, it seems like they have two variations they can use, whether it is tens on the Omen where they, they, they play a game that's centered around this crowding up, getting into the site together and just swarming. Whoa! Saw the top of the head of Sadak and falls. At least for allowed, they have this running back with QCK, hoping that Sadak was still alive to help with the recon dart, but it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for Loud to retake the site. John Cutie already setting up with the camera, so that's going to be the first contact. The rest of the team holding back towards B main, looking to just spam. If Loud make it through, make it through the first line of contact. John Cutie, five, beautiful by Zelsis. It allows again for him to get the kill onto Les. But there's QCK, upgrading weapon. Moshpin onto the ground, the lays coming out from Sentinels. That clock is ticking down here. Pain gels on top of that. Nice shot though from QCK as they're leading forward. Boomba to get more scans. Sus wow. dropping two and a beautiful hole for Sentinels in the end. Not even worrying about the smokes that could come through. They have all the utility and weaponry to fire back onto Loud and that low buy hurts. All the damage Sen did on the bonus round hurts and they pick up a third round now. And that, that, was the, that was the one variation of the hit where they can follow Zekin in. They can make it work on a map like Sunset. And then Kaplan can switch up the team and you can get a bind out of this squad that has a Yoru for 10 with a pushing everywhere. They know how to flex and flow between playstyles so well when they get on different agents. Sentinels is just showing different this year, but we got a whole series to go through and Loud has showed us just as much this season. Coming into round five, this tile push is Louds again, but Ten's answers. Two right away. But Tui's did get a timing. He made it through, that's going to catch Don Cutie. That's allowing to even up the tally and for the mid rounding to start a little bit earlier. Less even once more. No pun intended. As we have a fight now towards the A main side, instantly leaving Sassi alone. Oh. And they may even Taster's Choice this. And by that, I mean, who's going to kill Saucy? Do you get an alt on Sadak? Do you get an alt on Les? Is it different? Do you let him get it down and get the alts that way? Loud's going to be able to circulate these alts in the next few rounds. Saucy gets the plant, and beautiful that he can work off of it with Wingman here. Thrash is available. If this goes down, 
Saucy may go all out. That would be such a gamble, but look at him. It would forward. be. He's going to hear all of these rotates, so he's trying to get an angle. He's trying to get a surprise attack. Here's our first jump spot. Here's two crossing over. The third one already made it through. So Saucy now has a timing. Behind the three players allowed, rotating across. There's a snake by Torch Bay. Now it's being watched. There's oh, one and one, two. And he will have all the kit left now on his gecko kit. The launch bay going down. Forced the halfway. Out of position now. Less far there away. Is. There's that thrash coming out, too, from the front of the pillar. And Les even has to pull back towards the market. It does not hit him, though. But that clock is ticking down. Sassy's getting out of his Runs away for the time. Gets it done. And Sassy wins a three on one against Loud. Incredible play from Sassy. You can look at any player on this team and find that type of play coming out of Sentinels here. Absolutely routing loud. Listen to that crowd. The Saucy call outs come out as his plays go down. What a pivotal kill, too, for Tens. For Sentinels to understand the tiles push has been such a priority for Loud. They instantly attack back, snap back at Loud's push when QCK comes around the corner. And yeah, they're feeling that. What a play from Saucy. Absolutely throwing Loud's timing off by the wingman plant and pushing to market. Very heady play. We're in round six now. A mid play from Loud thinking that Sentinels might go for this encroachment again. They have a lot that it could work behind this wall that it just put up. There goes that curveball out for QCK, but Dewey still fell first. Sentinels are just anchoring around. They have support from all angles, controlling the middle. Not giving a chance here I for Loud to really exactly flow through a mid flood. With that hat. Thrown here by John Cutie at IGL. It gives enough information Ooh. that A site is open. It's weaker, where Sadak is currently only holding with the Sheriff. And even Sentinels, they're giving him that respect. We'll be all the way together, forming up all, or yeah. forming up forwards, rather. And really just working the protocols for the later rounds. Just the smoke giving them pawn shop control. They know Sadak's right there. And another quick wingman plant, giving Sentinel so much safety, never having to push into the site. One enemy remaining. Somehow Sadak had an opener, had an opportunity to drop John Cutie, but it's an IGL battle won by Sentinels. Yeah. Unless again, potentially in a situation, yeah, you already see him back it up. He's gonna save this one. Money wasn't too great here for Loud, and then his half buy that they had. The trap play was read by Sentinels. Exactly. Louder doing everything they can to get under the skin of Sentinels, find that first kill so they might be able to grab Zeus's Vandal or whatever he would have in the round and then move it around again, right? See what Les can get, see what can happen. Sentinels is avoiding it, though. They're understanding and respecting the fact that Loud can still do a lot of damage on these low buy rounds. And you're not seeing any wide swings that don't have an anchor of a Sentinel member on it. Very controlled play here by Sen, understanding their wing condition and holding it close to the chest. Four ultimates for Loud. Very big swing point in the game. We get another timeout right away. Oh my gosh. Should be the first one here after all. Okay, okay. Yeah. So now just trying to figure out what they could do with this probably. So we had an inkling that a timeout should have come out on that previous round. Right, so right. That lower buy that we had from Loud is just for him to decide, okay, we got four ults to work with this time around. But that doesn't take away any of the point that you mentioned so far, Riv, that this game means a lot for yeah. Sentinels. You know, they made it now into this grand final stage. It's been a very long time since they made it to a regional grand final. So Loud calls the timeout. This has been uncharacteristic in the fact that it doesn't seem like Loud is, one, getting their pushes into the map to affect Sentinels in a way where Sentinels has to worry. They have to restructure the play. It seems like Sentinels finds what Loud is doing and moves on. They don't really have to change too much. The second one is we usually see Loud have incredible audibles, they call in the mid to, to late round, that put them in the position to then stop another take from their opponent. And it seems like they're failing on both right now. Sentinels is able to run through this. And, and here's why it becomes a big swing round now. Three round loss row in a row, you're gonna get 2,900 into the pockets of Loud. That's basically on no credits as they have to spend in again. They need to use these ultimates to get some rounds back now, or it's gonna start swinging very heavily in favor of Sen. Already they swing heavily over towards the right side to pressure main. Pop flash going right into back alley. 
and it definitely looks like for loud side they want to try to use that right away there's the yep. ping on the first one already the igl is backing up trying to get the hunter scary out and there it is it does get a ping on a few and with flashes coming across it does get contact for pings but second still Almost. opens up sentinels were working towards the mid side after a trap play attempted by loud with these ults now less is going to be in heavy trouble towards the market he's there alone and he's just trying to anchor up at least one portion of this B site towards the map while the rest are pushing double towards A long. Zelsis is currently waiting. He lost his teammate in the process, but he gets the dink and the kill on the twoies. The flash turns away from it and does not connect on the second one. Kawazin walks out of, way, out of that fight, limping away, but still has that support from Sadak. Three on three now in the mid round. Finding fights around the map. Loud trying to pick apart at Sentinel's team before they hit these sites. Finally, we just talked about it. They couldn't find any ground before. It'd always be quickly traded back. Now the 3v3 stands. Unless gets traded out. Yep. In these moments during this kickoff, he's been so good in these anchored position to drop two and three. Has been a superstar player, but now Sentinel's coming out into this game. The basics, the fundamentals are looking oh, very yeah. good. They get a plan oh, and already a coming out. Looking around, a TP. Co moving forward, as looks like Tens is looking for a fight. He gets punished right away by Sadak as the Rolling Thunder comes out. Now even the Pinks comes out. Oh. Beautiful combination of utility from Loud as they drop Zassi and come in for the defuse. And we talked about how big this round was. Loud stays off going into economy hell right now. That was such a big round. Sentinels would have been running away with a few more in this first half would have not looked good. Now we have Loud coming back up here. Still going to be a buy coming in from Sen. It seems, yeah, they should be able to get that low armor in. See this again to the, the retake. It, it had to happen. It, for Loud to use the the, uh, the rolling thunder, everything they had, it was according to the play. This had to be secured. <laughs> oh, Saucy, not get out of that one. You see, they're still vibing. Loud knows this game isn't out of hand. It's not crazy. The few rounds down means nothing to Sadak and Loud. Still very much in it. And let's see how they play that. Always unfazed, Loud. The judges there for Sadak. So you know they're starting to get a little ratty on these. We'll see how that gets used. And these ultimates as well. QCKs can still go in. A quick retake and Les just pushes them out with the Viper's Pit. We have yet to see how Loud actually fight back with those. You see Loud though, just jingling across the contacts being those controllers. Less in the back of the site, two is on the A site. It looks like Sentinels want to activate right away. They'll come in out from Zelsis. Second, Satchel to cross. Contact on players from Loud in the back of Boba. As a plant comes in for Sentinels, it's time for them to play the Pulse Plant once again. But this time around, nobody holding yet towards the back of the B main. It's a paranoia to push through, and you hear that run it back. It should come across. Oh. The save comes out from Less, as it allows QCK to stay alive. A whole roster of Loud against three left of Sentinels. Paranoia being thrown on defense. There's that judge. Four utility flooding towards the front. But Celsius and Tents are holding back their ground for now. Beautiful flash out from QCK, though. As now the tap on the spike, trying to draw out the opponents. Beautifully done by Loud. They come in for the defuse, and you saw some hope there from Zelsis yeah. and Tens and Loud instantly. They held back for a split second, four Sentinels out, and finally played the fundamentals and won the round. That's the Loud train I think we've been looking for. It took a little bit to stoke the fire, but man, coming down the tracks, you do not want to be in the way of Loud when they feel like the retake is going 100%. The way they came through Boba here, just fearless as it were, as Sadak says. Loud just run right into B main. The last time we saw that fight, Sentinels was just lacing Loud as they tried to come into B main. They didn't even make it. Loud gained so much ground there, completely taking Sentinels by surprise. We set up for Sen in a bit of the same formation, but less movement. They're not taking as much of market. This was the wall that they just dealt with there in B main usually can mean someone pushes up. So you have to worry. Loud is giving Sen a lot of things to worry about here. And with Dizzy down, they're going to be able to have a little main control, but yeah. not in sight yet. Sentinel's just trying to play into Loud's style. Yeah. Where when they get pressure on one side, they usually push the extremity on the other. So you already see Tens holding back towards the A main side, all the way from spawn, trying to catch a forward push. But nobody's really moving here from Loud. They held things back towards the B site. They haven't really fully rotated. And for them, it's just very 
but still comfortable of playing that retake style uh, towards this A side. For Sentinels, they regrouped after that, after deniability mm -hmm. that you saw there from Les's utility with his teammates. Sentinels looking to pivot back. Toying with the door, just hoping Loud will have to keep covering Market there as they start to make their way. Zelsa's knife came up just a bit ago as they entered the left. A main area, but this is a contact play. They want to see how Loud reacts to this. And finally, after the first smoke comes out on yeah. the defense, the other one goes out towards the spot on the attack. Now you're not allowing your Atuis to get the high stack and a spray there they go. with his Vandal, which allows here a wingman to get a very late flat towards A. How far do they push forward? A little hide here from second right under the trash can. John QD is going to be flanking far, but it's watched by Sadak. What's the timing here? Loud comes through spawn. Through a whole flash towards the air just to try to slow it down for a bit. They're just trying to take down Sadak first to push towards that spawn. It works out. Another one fell within the site for Loud. But Loud have regained control of that B site. The tap to flush out Sentinels once again. Double back towards the default boxes. Last lines up two kills somehow. And the spray comes back here through the cages, but it's going to be difficult right now. Sassi does get the pick. The last one yeah. still sticks to the fuse. Woo! Not planned for them to be able to play that push forward. They really had to walk in the site, and Loud was always ready for that. Pretty wild damage from Sentinels, though, coming out with some uh, pistols true. on that, that round. They drop all of Loud. Loud and the fans happy, though, to pick up another round. Like we said, even looking at 5-1, we saw smiles on Loud's face during the timeout. It's still an any game, and we saw Loud use the ultimates to make that come true. Four to five now, three quick defuses on the post plant here that have brought Loud back into this, and we are going to get a Sentinels timeout now as they get a talk from Kaplan, figure out what Loud is doing differently here to get themselves back in the match. Really nicely done. They didn't have an answer for the beginning, right? We said Loud was kind of missing the early game control. We saw Colin Zine and QCK trying to work tiles in mid. They lose a few members, and that trade did not benefit Loud, especially the way Sen was taking the site. What I think we did get, though, is loud in those mid-round calls back, having the right positioning, waiting for each other, that patience where we know loud to be looking for the flank while the spike is ticking, and you're like, is there enough time? Well, it's enough time. They know, they've been there. We're getting that back from loud, and that's why we're close to tied now. Sentinels will discuss how to get back in. Three alts, thrash to be used by Saucy, 11 and four. He's had some fantastic games. Even though we lost the win on Ascent on the Sova, where he's like 20 and 5 or something at half. <laughs> the Odin Master over there. Yeah, he's been showing up as well for Sentinels this season. So we get back in. Also did not, decided not to play the Ascent in this Grand Finals. They Man, didn't. Against, that yeah, blew up. The fact that we had Icebox in here and Sen have been kind of kicking that out of the pool was very interesting. I cannot wait. But on sunset until it does just that oh, yeah. round 10. uh-oh thrash right off the rip how does loud respond to an instant aggression trying to get a camera uh pivot towards the mid and zelsis already fell Ooh. now just spraying across here and he gets a lucky kill onto yeah. a second but that second that falls he still get a plant now hunter's fury coming out from the defense of ping does get the hit onto john cutie from qck Here's a shot from behind the lurk once again. Saucy gets it done. Tens under heavy pressure alone towards the back of the site. Thrash being picked up. The TP away from one. Sees a second one. And it does get the hit here. That's going to delay even more. Sadak is detained. Tui's had to TP away. And now as they finally regroup, they don't have too much utility but these smokes. Tens is already pushing towards that spike. A beautiful Dizzy allowing Tens to get that pick. Up to Sadak alone. A nice oh. shot there from Tens once again. Landing out for the kill. And Sentinels finally get another point. He threw that through the window, right? Yep. Oh, we hardly ever get to see the windows used. Awesome stuff from Market. It, honestly, little things like that that you hardly see in your games are the ones that can catch you off guard in a millisecond. Oh my gosh. One like, wait a minute. minute. Yeah, there's a window. Vents that. Tens vents oh, Sadak. And that's going to be the end. 6-4. The timeout pays off for Sentinels here. Big time. After three post-plant rounds. Successful in a row. It's yeah. allowed. It seems as though the game plan got foiled, but thankfully you still have players that could really think on their toes, though, with how Tens and Sassy play that yeah. one because they lost a lot of players in the process trying to play this or trying to play a contact towards the A site. Music it gets dropped. The lore by from Loud. You saw the Bucky, a TP towards the back. 
Ali Sadak is there for the support. Tui is still holding exactly towards the back of the A side, and that is going to help a lot. Neural theft out. It's a forward push here from less outside the B site, while the rest are pinged out all around the A site. But for Sentinels, it's a cut noise. Just want to reset for a bit here with a minute left on the clock. I like the movement. Les said, all right, we're getting pinged. I'm going to get out here and kill the trap at, at B main just to make John Cutie think a little bit more. So John always watching the flank, though. They have to watch for less. Could be a factor in this round that just closes it out. Oh, Had oh, the angles gosh. the whole time, and now he gets oh, all the information. Here comes the bombardment, the Mordor towards the back of the side. Contacts on the Kalanzine while the rest of the Sentinels were there. What? Just to get the drive-by. Firing squad leaving Les alone. Yeah, he broke one trip on the B site, but couldn't get this one on the A site, so his cover is blown. Mosh pit to keep him away, but that's a nice oh. shot off Asasi. And now Two no one else peaks. Versus one, holding a tight angle as Setkin goes for the crab walk, though. And he'll get the pick. Seven to four now. Last round Sentinels, great control here. Kind of activating on Loud so quick. It almost looked like Loud fell asleep at the wheel for a second. That's just the timing wasn't there. Sentinels get a Thanos timing, walking into elbow here. Saucy drops QCK, no flash. And this, what? Three's a crowd. That was so unlucky there for was Loud very... because they were anticipating that hit from Sentinels. You saw, uh, who was that? I think it was Coward Zine or Sadat looking towards the air with a frenzy getting ready to hit that yeah. this. But he hit both of his teammates even all three before. But let's hold that thought. Showstopper already out, outside of the gates, and blow Sadak to bits. Once again, numbers advantage for Sentinels, allowing for them to work the map, working back towards his B-side. And right there, I hope we have enough time to say this, never mind. Not at all, Paranoia going back and forth just to try to delay towards the market, but still allowing Sentinels to gain space. And a plant attempt. As we went for attack first, and lost players towards the market side. Sassy's still alive at that spot, though. Try to hold it back. Plan finally is successful for the Sentinels. Smoke to just to help Sassi a little bit towards the market. Lao just winning here for that flank coming out from QCK. It's slow, but it's coming as a Dizzy comes up Dumb. just to try to delay towards the back of the site even more. Finally, that contact, as you mentioned, second season. Flash is coming out. There's that execution now for Sentinels. Back and forth, but still the advantage for the attack side. As they know, it was that flanker. QCK with no utility after he uses his wall. Contact out to Sasi, allowing here a second just to wait for the tap. Pain shells to keep him at bay. That will definitely end the half right now, especially with that kill coming out from Sasi as Sentinels to close out the half with a four point lead. Second use an alt there at the beginning of the round. The pressure is created. It's been such a different in that sense of ultimates being used right off the rip. All of Sadox Hunters, uh, the Hunters Furies, came at the beginning of the round, came to try and discombobulate what Sentinels was doing, and they only had to slightly respect it because they can dodge it. Second comes in, you have to respect it. The fundamental differences in the power that these comps can hit with is huge, and we'll see that as Loud comes onto the attack side now. It takes so much more to orchestrate this composition into a site. You're definitely seeing a lot from all of these players right now and from the IGLs too, but let's toss it back to Ender, where he has something for us by the Telestrator. Saucy finishes the half with a whopping 15 kills and only five deaths, and he is dominant in the clutch. Let's check out this round where he absolutely blows me away. It starts out Sentinels with an advantage, but Loud very quickly are able to bounce back with a few critical kills. Loud, we know, they don't play with Fierce. They step forward in mid in main to take these fights, and even poor Tens trying to move over into main get shut down. So where do we find ourselves? Saucy is stuck in a 1v3 situation, but those players are fairly spread out from Lev. So they're going to group up and that gives Saucy the B site for free. He can walk in here and notice he's got full utility down there at the bottom of the screen, including Thrash. That'll be big. But first, it's Wingman up to the plate. He's going to use that ability to be able to take more space than you'd normally expect in this position. The only thing, uh, the, one of the things that only Gecko can do. So Saucy moves into market and Loud are still taking things slow. They're going to group up together, but if they had split into mid right here, Saucy would have been able to find a pick. But now, Saucy, here's three points.
players and turns his attention. He has a very important decision to make. Does he try to pick off the final straggler here and get that one that would be virtually untradeable, swing on that guy there and then go for the play, or does he wait? He chooses to wait, which is a lower chance that he gets a kill, but a higher chance he can win the clutch. He moves on in here and is able to get both these kills here with a sick transfer on that one. It's money. The utility afterwards is perfect. And then going into Thrash, it makes the round nigh unwinnable. Left could not stick through that plant, and the Thrash means that he could not actually get on Spike in time. Let's get the second half underway. Back to our casters. Sick flip. Sick flip. Yeah, well done, Ender. <laughs> Great explanation here on how good these players are. It's not only about that meta, the battle of the IGLs, the big brains from the coaching staff. It's also just a heads up play from all these players that has been looking so good in this first half. And speaking of information to react right away, a that. knife went out towards the A sign, taking a few here, thrown by Zelsis, and Sentinels knows his hits coming towards the A side, and they're ready for this signature retake play style on the A site. Loud still deciding to work towards A though, so they might have something back in return. Right there. What are we working with? There are some ghosts, so a little bit of a drop on util there. Classics will be able to come in full utility wise. And the early delay, early fakes with a bit of utility here. I wonder if that's gonna allow Sen in a bit more, but this is uh, louder hunger down here. This is gonna be hard to get them out. Paranoia and Dizzy, that's gonna hit Fusic here, runs inside the smoke. The boom body even spots him and blows him away. Smoke flash good. towards the back. Coward seems fully blinded, but it's okay to stay behind the smoke. A tap onto the spike, a fault line coming out, a spray through the smoke, a spray and pray, and for Lao to hopefully get this pistol on their side. They gotta and start it's it not out. even halfway. The, oh, the wingman already got blocked. But there's no time left. There's no time left. Oh! The choice comes in for the right clicks. <laughs> what? Uh, this is going to be the type of place that we're going to see in a pulse fat plays between Loud and Sentinels. We're going to be on the edge of our seats. What do they call that cinema? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That was the uh, that was the Tuesday matinee. That was absolute chaos. Oh my gosh. That's the, I have one final choice moment situations. Everybody is doing the final thing they know they're gonna go down and that one was to jump through the smoke and finally kill the diffuser, even though it probably wouldn't have been half. That was just the kind of situation. The pressure Loud puts on the first attack round of their pistol here, second half. A big push here from Sentinels though. This is gonna be another war. Continuing with the double flash combination from the initiator, it's but QCK is just ready for that. So that only does he stops the push from Sentinels, but that's building up his ultimate here for the later rounds, even trying to clear for more. Grabbing the orb behind the Allen drone. Wouldn't be surprised yeah. if they just give him a plan or if he just chases the kill. But you're seeing like Sentinels are trying to rework the map somewhere. Go head to head. Omen versus Omen. Tui's gets the upper hand of Tens. He's not, he actually did see QCK trying to yeah. hunt for more kills there. He got instantly denied by Saucy. Camera will let them know they can end at AM this one. In Loud, I, I feel like needed to start setting the pace as they got onto this attack side. Sentinels, as they were on attack, like I said, what didn't care when the Hunter's Fury came out from Loud, they were able to work around it, absorb Loud's utility at market, and hit A, or the other way around, A to B. Here, Loud cannot let Sentinels set up a defensive spot. Loud needs to be in their face all the time. And again, with this composition Loud has, that has to be everybody behind QCK, right? QCK is not blast packing in. He's not dashing in. They have to go in together. And right now, they're picking these rounds up together. Yeah. I mean, as much as Sentinels has utility to retake these sites for Loud's side, they have as much Saul, right? They have that fault line to come out. They have the exactly. retard over the smokes. Yeah. They have Paranoia if they haven't used it for the takes. It comes down to how they work the map once again here on the attack. Sentinels might have to try to change things a little bit here as they have a gun round to come through. Yeah, so I wonder that's if that's for them to try to control something. I wonder if they, as Sentinels, try a trap play right away. Go with for their better own. guns than this. With yeah. better guns than this, yeah. Because it would be good against Loud. If, if, if Loud were to go slow on a round, might be this, thinking the low buy is gonna create a tough, Let's go. tough entry into the site. Four towards A for Loud, heavy side as well for Sentinels, strong side rather. Looks like up and over flash by Dizzy. No, they I don't think they've thrown anything yet. 
Heard the flash coming out from Zelsus just to delay a bit, though. Big paranoia. Fast again. Yeah, boom bot second satchels away. Tens trying to swing back out just to try to catch QCK off guard. A knife is gonna delay that utility that would allow for Loud to gain that momentum, gain that space, and a gain towards the elbow. As Sentinels wants to fight back, the aggression comes through. QCK is still on the top. A stick at close range. A second throw to Zelsus for the classic. Hot hands on the ground. Finally, Tens takes him down. And all the rest of Loud falls as Two Eagles was looking for that lurk. And Sentinels, they fight back on their gun round. They realize it's gonna be chaos. Send answer just as, as hard and weird and fast right there as loud as trying to hit that elbow spot. Also take a little pawn control. And it is taking control to kind of organize this mess that's going on. The nades that are being thrown. That first nade allowed this long peak to come through. With QCK there, they knew they needed to get him out of the situation, unroot him. It just caused the push. Sentinels is there with numbers because they did choose the right site, expecting Loud to hit A. Besides, sometimes at some point, those paint shells went down there from Zekin and QCK somehow still stood alive. So. <laughs> you jump up on the box as fast as possible. It's definitely difficult there for Sentinels to try to regain the, the elbow side, but they did power numbers. Now we have a tech pause coming out here, but it's quick, you know? Didn't even have a chance to talk about wow. it. Wow! That's even better. All right, cool. I'll take that. Any day now. And loud. just making sure tech pause works. <laughs> right? Tech pause to tech pause. At least loud right now still has this running back here that they could use. So adding that pressure on this A side to start. Even trying to see if there's going to be a push Standing from Sentinels down towards the middle for a B link control. Sentinels on their end, though, they're looking for once again. The first contact towards the front. Zels is with the support and the flashes on the back of the dumpster. So they could fight back. That's all they want to do so far. When they spray it across, they didn't hear anybody from Loud shooting back. So they might be able to start to pivot back and work towards yeah. the B-side. How about John Cutie? This is the first time that we'll see Loud start to use this wall here that kind of helps them get an entrance, mostly for QCK and, and Colin Zine to flash through. Then they can enter through their own wall. And they have to make Sentinels worry. Thrash comes flying out from Sase to check mid control, grabs one market, and Does here it comes. Satchel in, Juicy is still alive, coming back, but his teammates detained cannot really help yet. Mosh pit comes down, the timing of that one. Celsus gets the headshot. Ten's ready for a Paranora. Let's it rip. But the rest of Loud made it through towards the B site nonetheless. They gave up on that control towards the market. The plant coming down here for Karenzine. Hit by flashes all over for Loud. As Sentinels are still held back on the outside by middle and B main. Huge. There's that fight. The cut oh God, it's all around! Leaving out less alone on the one versus four. Positioned now towards the spike. As at least the thrash is not spot him. Now back and forth we go, and Zelsis gets another backstab. Tens is ready to come out strong in his grand finals as well. It's been an incredible year for Ten so far. We see him go from aggressive duelist over to smoke. Himself saying the consistency it brings to his play is unreal. And looking at how that works, we think about Tens, he's been on agents that can get out of a situation, but you know where that dash goes. You know where he might be playing. Now he can reset on an omen. He can, he can audio cut and rat a little bit more. He has so many more options here, and he looks so happy to be playing the new role. Yeah, it's insane too. Yeah, the, the questions that came out of Tens' role of like, Oh, and he's not able to play a raise too well on split. Or no. He should play a KO because his, it's, it's, it's like his play style from the other games. But this time as an omen, he's shining. His stats this year on average on the Yoru, the omen, way better than his Jets KOs from last year. Kind of incredible that he's able to put up these numbers still. You see how comfortable he is. We're not over yet here. Three rounds away of getting the first map for Sentinels as Louder looking for the contact play. Speaking of tens, he opens up the round. QCK falls, a tap on the spike, baiting out the players of Sentinels trying to push towards the spawn. R Loud. It will not mean any opposition, which allows for them to at least get a plant down to build that economy for the next. <laughs> Ready with the shorty in the smoke. Snake bite keeps them at bay. But all of Sentinels are here, getting ready to flood back from that A-Link once again. And there he goes, look at that utility. Everybody's hiding within the smoke, though, for a loud outside the site. Okay. Straight off for kills, and there's only less than two he's left. And Zekin himself is cleaning up the site. Showstopper ready for the next round as Sentinels score the 11. It, it, it kind of took Sentinels just fighting back as fast. That, I think the mid-round, 
where we saw Zekin fly through. That tells you how fast Sentinels want to be going right now. And Loud are going to be calling the timeout here. Boom. Tens playing the smokes. Frags all around for the team. Is It's not just kind of the 3Ks from tens. You're seeing the, the refrags, the trades. Sentinels is a well-oiled machine right now, and it looks like they could close this one out. They get a timeout as well off allowed, so Kaplan's gonna be able to talk to the team to help solidify these last few ultimates. A rolling thunder from Colin Zine here. That can be denied if they, if they throw that and Zelsis is there to null command down. How's the rest of that site take hit? It just seems like Sen has answers to the ult ready for loud. So it is gonna take the Sadak Masterclass here. It's gonna take this timeout to close these five rounds and bring us back to a tied game for sure. That's the important call there. What Sadak could really pull out of this timeout. The last one that they have on this map of Sunset. And where Sentinels, when we were watching how that history of the first half went through, for them to score that many rounds on the attack puts them in a comfortable position on their strong retake playstyle. And Loud has to find a way to answer that back. How do you fight back towards the spawn? They tried to play further back towards the A site and fight through after the initial utility that's being thrown on a defense for Sentinels. They're also alone in these forward positions after. They're not really able to set up for trades. This time around, though, Looks like Loud is just holding back for a mid control. Mm -hmm. Their weight looks like this. Zero point's gonna come over the top. You can see Zelsis' positioning. And Loud get too caught in that. Look purposeful as well. They kind of stood exactly where they wanted to. So Viper and a Breach, seen on the right side of the map is what Sentinels is working with right now. Again, this wall, only two times since this wall is put up from Loud have they tried to work through it. Last market we saw, Zekin came flying through with a showstopper. But now they're giving QCK quite a task here. Yeah, you already see QCK working up the mid of the map. The L drone comes out towards the right side, but the important thing here is Kauzin taking control of this B link. They try to use his Rolling Thunder to hold towards the left side or yep. flash towards the dumpster, but instead, after it sees nothing on the elbow side, they regroup and try to go for the contact play. Looking at Sadak, Sonar up, drone has been used. Again, they're really liking this elbow play. At least putting three or four members in there. They have to get Cowan Zine in there because the fault lines from that side just seem so much more effective Even to the rolling entry, thunder. the rolling thunder, yeah, to boot, right? So having Cowan Zine in this elbow has been a priority for Loud. They set it up again, and left. it's gonna be the 5v5. A good lurk here, however, from Tui's could just separate Sentinel's rotation. Feels like Loud seeing here that Sentinels like to play the retake, just contacting the site, oh, allowing this utility to delay even more. There it is. And as he throws out the Rolling Thunder off the knife, QCK is pushing forward. Just around the corner, though, Zelsis pulls out the Null Command. Zekin holding all the way back towards that Boba sign, where we have a late lurk from Tui still waiting for that opportunity to strike back behind them. But Sentinels are now running very quickly towards the A site. Showstopper to open it up. It's planet once again for the elbow spam. Wingman on the ground. Kaozin trying to delay as he runs forward with utility. Gets to Nina. Sadak though on the other side. There's that backstab. Two East trying to go for the hero play. There's that first kill. It's tapped at half. There's no time. Ten gets the kill. And it's loud. That stays alive. Two East the Lurk King on that one. Absolutely pivotal that Tui stayed alive and was able to get a huge kill on John QT there. Causing that defensive rotation to have to route around through spawn, take a little bit more time. Everything that Loud did there really hurt Sentinels. Sen tried to paranoia retake pawn shop into, into the, the dumpster there, and it didn't really hit anybody. They tried to retake flash on dumpster, and all of what they needed for sight was already used by the time Sentinels got there. Loud really draining Sentinels oh, utility down. in a way they cannot retake. See what happens here? Spread out across the map and a default. Same wall here. Loud's just kind of pressuring with this each round to give Sentinels to something uh, to look at and then possibly play through it with oh, their yeah, flashes. Saw two sets of footsteps there off that camera from John Cutie. Right. And look at Sentinels, a flash over and a swing after, a quad swing coming out, and that's just being held back. Even Paranoia to try to move forward. Kawasin's all the way back towards middle instead. A spray through the blaze wall to get that kill on the market. He's laughing. So yep. just la oh, that was that was a pretty hot situation. 
As they pull back, though, with the numbers advantage, five players to work together towards the A side, but Sentinel has the read on this. Never mind, it's a double pump. Mm hmm. Because at the position all the we have to ease all the way towards the B main. Take flight. Okay, so I feel like we have been missing this from Loud in yeah. these few rounds. The past rounds, it would be that they tempted B main. They were a little bit in mid, right? QCK would flash, and then everybody just reset to a default spot to hit A. Loud have not been leaving breadcrumbs around the map to be able to make audio calls on a rotation or be able to make that re rotate. And now we're seeing that come into play, those audibles we know, Sadak for in the middle to late round. Zelsitake snuck through, but KCK was still holding towards the billboard of the B main. A knife being thrown that would have been huge towards that B main site where they don't have the fault line aftershock to work with or snake bites, as a matter of fact. Even QCK's reflanking towards the mid side, but Sentinel's already pushing forward. Spraying through the attacker smoke, snake bite on the ground. There's that backstab, too good for yeah. QCK. Wow. What a swingy game. A few rounds here, a few rounds there, but the, the, the way the rounds are swinging, that team is in full control. Oh, yeah, that was close. We'll see it again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guy. <laughs> He's like, I'm, I'm not KO ulted right now. You can't do that. I'm not going to be res. QCK with a really nice flank. And that's been working so well now for Loud that they can continuously move from site to site, or the last few rounds, I should say, not for the map. They've only employed it here. So Sen calls a timeout. We got this in the first half out of um, out of Kaplan and Sentinels were able to really come back with a pretty strong round. See what kind of ideas they can muster up during this one. Ultimate for John QD and tens, kind of passive alts. Really need to make something work to get those in action. But Sadak. Do we see this off the rip or does it become a post plant? They have been focusing from the defensive side. Loud has that that Hunter's Fury controls the map. It gets them an idea right away off a drone or a, a sonar bolt tag. But likely here to see it as they hit the site and try to clear one of those defensive positions Sen will be covering. And that's the thing, Loud, again, they were able to play contact in the sites and use the ults on post plants instead and not having to waste them. Yes, we heard some Hunter's Fury, but those are trap plays that they had on defense this time around though. If they could continue to work the same way, I mean, for them, they don't need to fix anything because they're coming back in this game. Yeah. For Sentinels, the question is, how do we want to fight this? Do we want to move more forward here to not allow Loud to play the contact? It looks for information towards this mid side. Fake TP to be main, but the push is huge here from Sen. They're trying to change the pace of the game of what Loud has been seeing the last few rounds, feeling in control. Sen trying to take that away. Passive play from Loud gets them safely across the map here. But this is what they were doing before. Not really tempting or leaving anybody at a site, just Where making some noise ready? mid, and then they're going to hit A. This could be basic things too from Sentinels holding towards the back mm -hmm. of the side with John's cutie set up on the A, just to maybe try to break a windman with his trips inside the A site. Run it back here, utilized by QCK just to clear out the space towards the dumpster. The plant still comes down. A lucky kill up to Kawatsin. Throws up the hat, but the plant still went down for Loud. That's yeah. huge. That's Kawatsin's the one they want an elbow. For him to go down, this means that Sen can get back in. Right now, the goal is to protect Sadak so that he could use his Hunter's Fury. There is that tap, uses it out right away. And now, right after, it's going to be for Loud to fight back inside the smoke. Flashes are coming through. Nades are coming across towards the smokes as Tens is holding off angle. A curveball being turned. A nice kill from Tens. Snake fights on the ground as well. Wingman comes up trying to get it down. It's at least at halfway. He's trying to stick it fully for Wingman, but gets denied. It's up to a two versus one. A push for it from Bless once again. Denied by John Cutie as he'll get to the fuse in map point. Round 12 for Sentinels. Tens again. I'm pretty sure Sa Sideshow mentioned it previously, but that flash turning percentage, Tens being at the top, the least flashed member, we see it in action. And John Cutie, that West kill. West Flash didn't care. <laughs> oh, West yeah, still actually got tagged by it. Never mind. Good POV. Good POV. It just doesn't matter with Tens. <laughs> They have a Cowanzine, that kill from John Cutie on a Cowanzine. You saw how confident Sentinels was to step forward there and go for the hit. What a kill to be able to pull up. 
Jarris now exactly. for the side of Loud. What a hurt on game point now as they're going to try to get QCK up this mid position again. A little rinse and repeat on the strats before, but it brings most of the team to keep him safe. QCK with the Sheriff, the double swinging out the wall bang, forcing Zelsis away. Trying to take the mid control, even shock darts eat, uh, thrown from Sadak to keep him back. Sentinel's trying to push forward. It was being watched by Les, so you have three players now contained in the A site. That said, though, with the amount of rounds that were coming back here for Loud, yeah. that one single loss now map point for Sentinels. The economy's broken for Loud. They have to try to get something done here. Controlling maybe an orb on the B site, a Viper plant <laughs> off the pit, using his Owl drone to sell that fake with. This perfect. is we got the backstab though for QCK. It's perfect. But finally, John comes out of the camera to trade that out. They get information on that Sentinel player towards the back of the site. And they try to execute now for Sentinels. A tap to allow Cowdy okay. to swing out instant headshot. Left. Still not deciding to go for the plan for less. They want to use it for Cowd Zine. It's been a name of the game so far on how they're forming the arms in the plant. Sentinels now trying to go for a three-player retake at a disadvantage. Look how far back here Sadak is. Still waiting to see somebody's gonna flank across. Delay is being thrown early for Loud. A flash towards the market. First contact is less. Kawadzin avoided. The mosh pit now swings out, hit by at least the fragment. Plant denied. A push for from Dewey's. Zelsis is alone. And it becomes a nice post plant hold for Loud. That actually is one of the coolest rounds I've seen Sadat come up with. When they were running back to A, you saw Sadat instantly peel off. It's like a light bulb went off in his head, peels off, and then sets up to quickly set the drone. It looked like they were actually running all the way back. Says, okay, Tuis, give me that all back here. They do a global distraction to allow QCK's hit exactly. to work even better. Sick thinking. Absolutely disgusting. And we said, just sheriffs? Just sheriffs? It was the two first kills they got. Honestly. Tracy Kane, Kawad Z with sheriffs. They make it <laughs> Making the crowd ill. Yep. Making the crowd ill. Maybe it's going to smile again. <laughs> 9 to 12. Pop flash towards mid, possibly. Definitely. Yep. Pop Even flash Satchel's mid. out from Zekin. And a paranoia on top of that that came from 10. So try to do a trap play with the lower buy that they have on the defense for Sentinels. But. Again, it's the masterclass IGL and calls from Sadak, holding all the way back for, towards spawn. It's wild. Even towards the extremities. Just wild. All right, into Got the site here. Out. Just three rounds away for Loud to secure us our OT. It's going to be a low buy from Sen. Back in the site, they're going to hunker down and try to find those close angles. It's how can Loud dislodge them. Ultimate for Kalenzine could come around. That's the ultimate plant. If they can keep Kalenzine then it can elbow without some John Cutie spam. Easy one there for Zelsis. Ooh, they lost the breadcrumb. That's what they were leaving this time. Sadak goes down. And they have to make noise now. This is all going to be heard by Tens, but Tens only has a sheriff in the back of the A site. Sassi with a pistol himself. So this is a very weak A site hold. A flank coming behind here. A flash. Tens is fully blinded. The lurk comes up from Sassy? the side from Les. Yeah, Saucy gets Ooh, the headshot. And it's a ding from Les. Three players remaining from Sentinels coming back once again from the A link. Tui's now takes control towards the back of the default. Gets one for his troubles back there. A two versus two. A pit out, a rolling thunder. Giving a lot of chances for Loud here on the pulse plant. Camera coming out, forcing now Sentinels to go inside the pit to fight back. Zelsis is at low on HP, upgraded into a rifle. They actually have two rifles to work with. There's that first deniability to run across. Zelsis does get the pick though. And Les has one more stink bite. And they Bullets have to go and buy him. The tap on his spike, the kill from Celsius. The defuse comes out for Sentinels as they finally close out map number one. It's incredible the amount of times we see Sentinels squad rush, crowd up and squad rush a site. You see it all the time on split. Then they'll be defusing while they're still members of the opposing team in the site, pressuring the peaks, pressuring the opposing team to come out of the woodwork. How